Namaste. I'm Reverend Wendy Craig Purcell here at the Unity Center in beautiful San Diego. Thank you so much for subscribing to this channel. Please make sure that you like the video you've just watched and consider making a contribution on our app or on our website. It's really easy to do. And thank you in advance for that support. It does make a difference. Today in specific, I want to talk about the idea of partnering with spirit, partnering with God for security. And as we start, I, I wanted to begin by kind of just unpacking those words. What is it that I mean by this idea of partnering with spirit, with God for security? To me, the idea of partnering is a decision. It's a decision that fundamentally says, whatever it is I'm about to do, I'm choosing not to do it all by myself. That when I partner, whether it is partnering in business or partnering in life or partnering spiritually, I am making a decision. I am saying, I am not going to do this, whatever this is, all by myself. I'm going to do it in collaboration with something or someone else. In a human partnership, I want to believe in the other person. To me, belief is very much intellectual. I want to believe in the other person. But I want to do more than just believe in the other person. I want to trust them. And to me, that takes it even further than belief. Belief seems to reside more in the mind, whereas to me, trust relies in, it's about relying on the other, relying on the other, putting my whole self in, if you will. Partnering with God, partnering with spirit for security, what does that really look like? Most of us in this room, I think perhaps all of us in this room, recognize that life is ever-changing, right? That's the one thing we always say we can count on is change. So security in an ever-changing environment, security in an ever-changing world, what can that possibly be? And I was thinking pretty deeply about that. What can that possibly be? Certainly, it's not, it's not permanence because everything changes. To me, what it is, it's a sense of well-being while in the flow of uncertainty. A sense of well-being while in the flow of change. And that is something that we can learn to do. That is a quality of life, a habit of thinking that we can cultivate. And so it happens in this idea of partnering with spirit. It happens in this idea of partnering with God. The longest, most successfully running, oldest department store in the United States finally closed its physical doors just last year. This department store began in 1826 and only closed its doors, its physical doors, in 2021. Some of you, especially if you spent any time on the East Coast, would clearly recognize this store, a much-loved store, especially its flagship store on Fifth Avenue, the name of the store, Lord and Taylor, Lord and Taylor. The story goes that Mr. Taylor dreamed of having a very successful store, but he ran into a lot of problems along the way, a lot of setbacks and a lot of challenges and difficulties. And then he had an idea, and the idea was perhaps he had to take on a partner, and not just any kind of partner, but a very special partner. And the story goes that he took on not Mr. Lord, but the Lord as his partner, and things turned around. Well, if you do any deep studying, 
and research, you find that that story is urban legend. That Lord and Taylor, Mr. Lord, there was a Mr. Lord, Mr. Samuel Lord, actually began the store in 1826. It was a dry goods store. And a few years later, he brought on board his wife's cousin, Mr. Taylor. George Washington Taylor was his name. And they developed a very, very successful store. Now, I wish that the urban legend was true. But what I got to thinking about is, but wait a minute. Every time they spoke about their store, every ad that they put out, every check that they signed, every bill that came in, every on the front of every store was what? Lord and Taylor. Maybe it was very much an unconscious energy that just infused everything. It said that they had some pretty strong core values as a company. I've got to kind of think that they were doing something right to have lasted from 1826 to 2021. They were the first retail store to hire, to bring on board a female president. Do you want to guess what year that was? 1945. That was significant. Lord and Taylor. In metaphysics, we, we don't look at the Lord as our Savior. We respect and deeply love that Jesus was a teacher of consciousness, but we don't relate to Jesus in the way that many in a more mainline or traditional church might. In metaphysics, we look at the idea of Lord as the law, the law of being, the law of consciousness. And whenever we are facing difficulty in our lives, whether it is a health challenge or a relationship challenge or a financial challenge or job security or everything we've been dealing with for the last 18 months through the pandemic, that if we can understand and partner with principle, if we can understand and partner with God, with spirit, we can turn things around we can find that we are able to, to experience that sense of well-being even when everything around us may seem frightening or chaotic or changing or uncertain. That's where our security lies, in that. And yet, so much of the messaging that we might get from the outer world is to look somewhere else, that security, oh, if we have enough money in the bank, then we will be secure. And yes, a certain amount of money helps, but, but it's interesting. There have been so many studies done on when is enough enough, and you ask most people who have all different levels of financial net worth, do they have enough? Do they feel secure? And it's always, it's on the other side of that. It's just a little bit beyond that, whatever that line may be. For most people, it seems like there's never quite enough to get that feeling of security. Or we might look for it in, in our environment, our possessions, our stuff. Just let me have my stuff. I remember one of the saddest parts in watching my mother-in-law as she, as she aged was how tightly she held on to her stuff as if her stuff was going to give her what what stuff can never give anyone. Stuff wears out, right? It breaks, it deteriorates, it depreciates. We can think of our security in our jobs, in our careers. And yet, how many times are we being told now that the average worker is going to have to be trained and retrained for any number of different careers? And so, if we want a sense of security in our lives, and I think most of us do, we have to look differently at what that is. It's not in anything that is in physical form. It is in a mindset, it is in a consciousness, and it comes from a set of practices, from a set of practices. True security, I think, is a result of trusting, not just believing, but trusting in God not just believing, but trusting in God. 
I did a search on the latest Gallup poll that I could find, which was done in 2018, on the percentage of Americans that say they believe in God. And as you may suspect, just as church attendance is going down in, in our country, so is the belief in God going down, but it's still incredibly high. It is still at nearly 90% of Americans say they believe in God. But belief in God isn't enough. And I often wonder when people say they believe in God, tell me about the God that you believe in. What kind of God do you believe in? For the same, on the same token, when somebody says to me, I don't believe in God, I want to know, tell me the kind of God you don't believe in, because I bet the God you don't believe in is the same God I don't believe in. Nearly 90% of Americans still say they believe in God. But what does that really mean? And is it enough? No. It's trust. Some of you have heard this story before, but it still lives in me. I had a sweet spot in my heart for my Uncle Jim. My Uncle Jim on my dad's side of the family, long since gone, was a rascal. And that is using a very nice word to describe him. He was in and out, not only of jail, but of prison. You got to do some bad stuff to get in prison. But over time, he turned his, his life around. He stopped drinking. He stopped doing a lot of the things that were getting him in trouble. And he was a really neat kind of guy. And I think I liked him because he was very much at least the known black sheep in, in our family. And my Uncle Jimmy told the story of the difference between believing in God and trusting in God. And I have never, ever, ever forgotten it. And the way he tells his story is you're at the circus and there is a, a very skilled tightrope walker doing his routine across the high wire, no net beneath him. And one of his most amazing routines is he takes a wheelbarrow and he pushes that wheelbarrow across from one side to the other, no net beneath him. And you've been watching this guy throughout his routine and he hasn't fallen and then the big ta-da ta -ta is the wheelbarrow. Belief is that he will make it from one side to the other. And you believe, my Uncle Jimmy would say, you believe he's going to make it from one side to the other because you've just seen him doing all these other amazing things, so you've built up your confidence in his ability to make it from one side to the other. You believe he can do it. Trust is getting in the wheelbarrow. I loved my Uncle Jimmy. Trust is getting in the wheelbarrow. Remember I said earlier that belief is kind of intellectual? And I think it's a little more than that, but I don't know how else to describe, describe it. Watching that guy go back and forth and knowing that he can, believing he can make it across with the wheelbarrow is much more of a cerebral experience. Trust, getting in that wheelbarrow, is reliance. Reliance. There's a big difference in believing in God or believing in spirit and relying on God, relying on spirit. If you've been with me for any number of years, you know that I alternate in using those words pretty fluidly, God and spirit. And I've grown comfortable with the God word. In ministerial school, I wasn't so comfortable with the God word, and that's a pretty bad thing or tough thing in ministerial school to have challenges with the God word. But it was because of the concept of God that I had originally grown up with. But if you ask me, do I believe in God, I would say yes, if, if by God you are referring to these four things. If by God you are referring to the breath of life that animates all. If by God you are referring to the creative, benevolent force of good in the universe. If by God, you mean the essence of unconditional love. And if by God, you mean the mysterious, intelligent, organizing principle of life, then yes, I'm right there with you. So call it God, as Daniel did in his song, I don't need to know because I know God. God knows. 
So whether you call it God, you call it spirit, what matters is not the word. What matters is that your belief has got to be more than a belief. It's got to be a reliance, a reliance on that. And the more we rely, the more we will learn to let go and relax and enjoy our lives. Who wouldn't like more of that? Who wouldn't like more of that? I do trust God completely. That does not mean I always understand God. That does not mean I always welcome what is coming my way. But I do always trust God. And I hope to help you develop and deepen in your trust of God of spirit as well. I want to read a piece to you from Richard and Mary Alice Chapola's book, The Quest. I've referenced their work many times over the years. It's a, a kind of a standard unity workbook and textbook. If you're relatively new to unity, it is a great read to really get a broad understanding of what our teachings are and what our principles are. In it, they write about the idea of trust and belief in God and, and how that kind of morphs and changes the flow of it. They write, early on the path, we learn that God is the one presence and the one power and that God is absolute good. Therefore, if God is absolute good, we should be able to trust God and know that there is a continuous flow of good in our lives, even when we cannot see it. But there's a big difference between learning a truth and living in that truth. That's like what I was saying, the difference between believing, intellectual, and trusting, relying. There's a big difference between learning a truth and living in that truth, acting upon it, basing day-to-day -day decisions upon it. We grow into trusting God over time. That's important. We grow into trusting God over time. In the beginning, it is hard to hold on to that trust. When we're in the midst of a troubling situation or crisis, we panic. We feel afraid. We're anxious. Then something happens, and we see the good. We see the purpose. We see the plan, and we say to ourselves, I will never doubt God again until the next crisis occurs and we find ourselves slipping back into the old pattern. Nod your head if you can relate. Probably most of us can. But this time we pull ourselves out of it much more quickly. Bet you can relate to that too. We pull ourselves out of it much more quickly. We turn to God. We trust and so the cycle goes. Eventually each new troublesome situation becomes less and less anxiety-provoking, and we find that we can trust God for longer and longer periods. We discover that there is a divine order to our lives, a divine plan. It is revealed piece by piece, not all at once. A lot of words of wisdom to that. It doesn't happen all at once. We grow into it. It's been said of unity as a teaching, as a spiritual teaching. You grow into being ready for these teachings. You don't usually start off that way. You grow into being ready for these teachings because these teachings require so much of us. They require far more than just attendance. They really require getting in the wheelbarrow. They require that. So how do you build your trust in God? Let me share just a few quick ideas with you. They're simple, but they'll work. Number one, develop a relationship with God. Develop a relationship with Spirit. What does that mean? Talk to God, but don't just talk. Listen. Have you noticed in your human relationships that if you only talk and you never listen, they don't work too well? Nobody's noticed that? Well, let me tell you, if you haven't noticed it, your partner's probably going to ask me for counseling. Okay. Develop a relationship with God, with spirit, meaning talk to God in whatever way feels natural to you, but also listen. It's one of the reasons that our meditation practice today, I suggested just letting the stillness speak. I've been doing a lot of that in my personal meditation lately. 
just to sit in the silence with gently holding the idea to let the stillness speak. So develop a relationship with God. Talk to God, not just when you're desperate, but when things are going okay. Second, gradually let go a bit more in the easier places in your life. Gradually let go a bit more in the easier places in your life. If you've never really put this to the test, it can be pretty scary to put your trust in God in the really, really big things. I'm not saying don't, but it's a lot easier if you have the luxury of where you are in your life right now to start in the easier places to put your trust in in God, to rely on God. The third idea, critique your worry, fear, and anxiety. Critique your worry, fear, and anxiety. You know, oftentimes it seems like we critique our faith more than we critique our worry and fear. When we just have that gut feeling, it's going to be okay. A lot of times people critique that more than the fear voice that says, oh my God, everything's going to fall apart. It's never going to work out. We're never going to get out of this panic. We don't seem to critique that, to critique the fear, to critique the doubt, to critique the anxiety, to critique the worry. To ask ourselves, have we ever really worried very effectively? Probably not. Probably not. The fourth, stop throughout the day. Just for a minute to consciously feel your oneness with God, with spirit, whatever that is to you. If I ask you to do that right now, I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can turn off the the wonderful minds that we have, and they are wonderful, but I'm sure you can turn that off and just say, I'm going to connect with that mystery. I'm going to connect with that, whatever that presence is to me, whatever that something is going to connect with that. When we do, it helps us take ourselves out of the smallness of our human dimension, and it helps, us, it helps to take us out of feeling rigidly stuck in a problem. When we are dealing with a problem, it can feel like there are walls around us. When we choose to, to cultivate trust, when we make Throughout our day, that mindful connection with that divine essence, it's as if it breaks through those walls, even if only for a few moments. But in the breaking through of those walls of consciousness, of the mindset, we find on the other side hope. And we will likely find on the other side an idea that can help us deal better with whatever that problem is. And the very last that I would share is asked to be shown reasons or or examples in your own life of why you can trust God, of why you can trust spirit. You know, we keep, many of us keep gratitude journals. They seem to cycle in popularity. I know even for myself, some years it's all about a gratitude journal. Other years it's about a different kind of spiritual journaling. But what if you were to, for a month, or for the 21 days that they say is enough to to establish a new habit, what if you were to keep a journal where you wrote down those memories of or those experiences of you putting your trust in God, and whatever it was, it turned out well? Do you think that might help? I bet it would. Because they say we tend to remember pain and negative things more than we remember the good. And I think that's out of biological reptilian brain that's trying to keep us alive and protected from external threat, but that can be a pretty shallow way of living. So maybe just keeping front and center of your mind where and how your trust in God has benefited you will help you to cultivate that even more. Namaste. Namaste.